Good evening. Welcome to the Folk and Traditional Art Application and Artist Resource Information Session. This evening's program, we will provide information to artists living and working in the Northeast region of Pennsylvania. Presenters tonight are Kimberly Crafton, Interim Coordinator of the PCA Folk and Traditional Arts Partnership through the Everhart Museum, and Dr. Catherine Richmond Cullen, Director of Arts and Education of NEPA at the NEIU, Northeastern Educational Intermediate Unit, and Liz Feist, Assistant Director. So we're gonna begin by um, starting with um, Kimberly Crafton of the Everhart Museum. We have a chat feature in the YouTube channel, and you can ask questions throughout the presentation. We'll be answering as many questions as we can throughout this session. Um, if we don't get to your question, we'll be answering it later on um, at another date. So I'd like to introduce Kimberly Crafton. Good evening, everyone. We're so glad that you are able to be here with us this evening. And I know there are a great many people that would like to be with us. So this is also being recorded so that you can watch it at another time. So whether you're catching us live or whether you're catching us at another time, we're delighted to be able to be here with our partners through the PCA, um, Dr. Collin and Liz Feist. And uh, thank you, Stephanie, for helping us all come together and bring this information forward. The Everhart Museum has recently become a partner with the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts to help create an infrastructure for folk and traditional artists across the six county area. So the area that we are talking about is actually um, the same area that is covered by other areas of the, the Pennsylvania Council for the Arts Programming. So we'll explain how that happens. But in general, the goals are, as we're setting forward this um, infrastructure, we're looking to identify the traditional artists of the region of which we know we have enormous riches. We're also looking to create a curated roster of those artists. So we are really looking for people that have the top experience in our region that have an extensive experience in practicing and teaching that art and that have a demonstrated history of how they came into that knowledge whether it was through self-education or whether it was through specific training or mentorship there are a lot of different ways that uh, that we look at that but it we are looking for a demonstrated extensive experience and we're looking to then assist those artists in keeping their traditional practices alive. We'll be talking later on about apprenticeships and things like that. And we're also looking to increase public access to folk arts. That's one of the major, major goals here. So again, the um, National Endowment for the Arts and the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts are how money arrives in our communities to help support the arts. So starting with the National Endowment for the Arts, that money then goes to the different state arts councils, arriving at the Pennsylvania Council for the Arts, then the Pennsylvania Council for the Arts has different ways that they can bring that money into the community. So we'll be learning later on from Dr. Collin and from Liz at the NEIU and Arts and Education that about those two streams, Pennsylvania Partners in the Arts and how that works and Arts and Education. And then I will be discussing first the folk and traditional arts. We were talking about the different regions. So across Pennsylvania, you see there are a lot of different ways that the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts works with regions to help support the artists of that region. And we are up in that corner with, um, of course, Lackawanna and Luzerne, those valley cities in the Endless Mountains, Susquehanna and Wyoming County, and in the Pocono Mountains, Wayne and Pike counties. And we are the designated Airy, we are uh, the Everhart Museum in the partnership with the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts is the designated, um, the organizer for folk and traditional arts in this area. So 
again, Catherine and Liz are going to discuss this, but just so you understand a little bit, um, the Pennsylvania Partner in the Arts works to award grant funds into the community as far as doing community activities and supporting organizations. Arts and education, they leverage funds through the Commonwealth to support learning experiences, in-depth learning experiences with youth and adults. And for the folk arts, that's where we're gonna get into. Um, our goal is, our role is a little bit different, but we want you to understand how these all work together and they all are able to be supportive of one another. Um, we'll discuss that a little bit because our goal with the folk and traditional arts is to investigate, document, sustain, by, uh, sustain the folk and traditional arts by presenting an infrastructure to be able to help artists to not only thrive, but for people to access the arts. And again, to help create ways that people can learn those arts and carry on the traditions. It's a huge, concerned that folk and traditional arts are in danger of being lost and the methods of how we keep those arts alive are going to be of enormous importance as we continue forward. So in this very first year of the arts folk arts initiative, we are as I've mentioned, trying to build an infrastructure. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means we have to find a way to reach out to artists all across the six county area. And we have an enormous um, number of museums in our region, cultural organizations, heritage um, groups, and arts groups none of them are specifically geared towards folk artists. So folk artists find themselves trying to fit into a fine art gallery or trying to work with place uh, like in Susquehanna County, Old Mill Village, where they're presenting their traditional arts and their folk arts as part of a history museum, or they are trying to uh, land somewhere in the middle, but there's not really a structure to help us find a way to communicate with Prep, represent and bring forward the richness of the artists that we have in this region. And that's what we're really trying to do is to identify ways of being able to communicate with folk arts across the region so that when there are opportunities for um, apprenticeship grants, when there are opportunities for public programming, we're able to reach out to them and um, help disseminate that information a little more easily. When we are then communicating with these artists, one of the most important jobs that we have is to document their work, document the process by which they came into their skill. How did you arrive at first seeing this art? Was it part of your family tradition? How did you learn it? How long did it take you to master it? Um, have you taught other people? where do you first remember someone in your family exposing you to this art? Uh, were there other artists in your family? These are all wonderful questions that normally would be asked by a folk art researcher, a folklorist, going out to interview the folk artist. And COVID has both clipped our wings a little bit and given us new ones at the same time because certainly it's not an environment that we can continue to do at this moment, what we call field work, going out and doing those interviews with artists, meeting them in their studios, having those kinds of very close conversations. But in making that not advisable at the moment, it made us look at things a little bit differently and say, how could we take all of those wonderful questions that normally we would be doing in an interview and turn them into a way for the artist in their own words to be able to answer that as a self-documentation where in their own words, they can answer those questions. So that's what we've tried to do is put together a way that you as an artist can take advantage of this application to be able to present that documentation in your own words, rather than having someone else do the interview and then present their interpretation of what you've said and who you are and what your concept of your art is, you get to be the one to do that. So 
in this year one where we're trying to gather all of this information from artists, we then have to have a moment for a panel to be able to look at those answers and to be able to identify um, the what we're looking for, the master level artists in our area and to be able to create a curated roster of those master level artists. Now, that's a lot to get done in a short period of time. And we know that we certainly will not be able to get to everyone in the six counties who is deserving of being able to hear about this and to make an application. So we wanna make it very, very understood that this is just the first step of it. This is us getting the, you know, a chance to get everyone involved and, and present their applications, but it certainly will not be the last time that you'll be able to do that. If you miss this deadline, there will, for the next year's 2021 and forward, there will be a rolling application with various points throughout the year where we would be doing these reviews and then curating and adding the, the ones who are you know, of the master level, as far as an artist goes, adding those names then to the roster. So um, from in this 2020, we will have a deadline for when applications have to be submitted. But then again, going from 2021 onward, you'll have the chance to submit application and it would be a three times per year review session. So there's plenty of uh, opportunity to continue to get the word out, to build relationships in the community. And that's what infrastructure building is all about. Year two and onward, um, we then go on to, once we've got this roster begun, then we can begin working with making programs in the community. We can start working on um, helping people find out how to apply for apprenticeship grants. And, um, and again, going towards increasing public access to the folk arts. And there's a few different things that you'll see mentioned there that yes, the public programs help us increase the access to the folk arts. And that's maybe something that we can work with the uh, Pennsylvania partners in the arts that we can um, work in, in concert with them. And in far as working with the um, arts and education, we can also build really wonderful relationships there so that we can work hand in hand as Pennsylvania Council on the Arts partners. The other thing is that of course, mentioning apprenticeships. So year two and onward, people who are on the master roster, the master artist roster would be encouraged to work with a younger artist to submit together an application where the master artist and the apprentice would submit an application and it would be for the master artist to be able to be um, paid in helping promote the longevity of their art form to that apprentice. So there's a lot of really good stuff in the future, but our first step is to really just try to get it up and running. Stephanie, are there questions yet that you're seeing anywhere? Um, there's no questions, but we've had a few new people join actually. So Wonderful. Um, if you could, Kim, maybe just uh, mention if someone is watching and maybe knows of an artist, what do they do? Absolutely. So um, we, you're going to see some um, a web link and I'll, as we're talking about this, one of the really important things is that certainly not all artists spend their time on the internet. You know, a lot of them are in their studios. And so uh, enormous favor and um, public service that we're asking of the community is to let us know, certainly each of us, might remember someone who is an exceptional artist or a craftsperson in a traditional art of our region. And we want to be able to have you contact us and let us know who is it that we should be reaching out to. Um, we would be happy to go out to their studio. It doesn't mean, you know, if they don't use the internet, we can certainly go out to their studio in a safe manner and help learn about them and their art and see if they would be interested in taking part in this program. So 
All right, as we move on, um, that's exactly what Stephanie was just talking about. How do you, how do we kind of move forward? And as I mentioned, you know, this idea of making an application to be considered to be on the master um, artist roster, that is what we would normally be doing as our traditional documentation. But right now we're, we're calling it an application. We need to learn about you. And we need to understand, in your words, what it is you do as an artist and what your tradition is. And, um, and really, uh, we want to be able to represent you and honor what you've been doing in our community for so long. So one way to start is to go ahead online to everheart-museum.org slash forward slash folk art application. And there you're going to be able to read about the program. There's a printable information there that you can look through to understand it a little bit better. Um, the application is included there on that page, both in web form where you can just submit it right through a Google form and it comes directly to us. And you can follow up then with email links about uh, videos and um, representations of your art. And lots of information is there as well as our contact information for any questions. And that is what I'm here for. I am absolutely here to answer your questions, to help guide you. Um, I would much rather, if you were concerned or confused about something, just give me a call and I can hopefully clarify it for you because we don't want you to have to spend any more time on this than, than you need to. But I think going through that documentation, that application is kind of a wonderful way to reconnect to, uh, to your art as well. So it's a fun, it's a fun um, process to go through. Another thing you might want to do is to go on to Art Scene website with Erica Funky and go to their November 4th episode and you will hear us discussing the program and I think that'll give you a little bit of the spirit of what the what folk arts are. It's such an enormous conversation to have is what is folk art, what are folk and traditional arts and the definition of them is is pretty intense and it's pretty difficult to really nail it down. But I think that if you listen to that interview with Erica, she always does such a wonderful job of getting right down to the heart of things and you'll get the spirit of what we're looking for. And that'll certainly help answer a lot of your questions as well. And then I think just jump in, go ahead, make begin the application, call, email, whatever you need. And honestly, we are here to help you succeed. Gathering artists together, being able to present them in a roster, which would be put both online and, um, you know, again, shared with our PCA partners. This is, is something really um, important to get started. So we really do want all of this to be successful for our community to grow and for you to continue to grow as an artist and help future generations of artists to continue forward in your footsteps. So our time frame for all of this is that applications will be due for again for this particular um, um, session, I guess you could call it, for this particular time of, of review on November 29th uh, by 11.59 p.m. We had to pick a date somewhere and that that is it. November 29th, 2020, 11.59 p.m. We would need your applications uh, to us by then. From the next day forward through December 17th, we'll be reviewing those applications. And then on December 18th, all applicants will be notified by email. And um, so again, for anyone that has information about other artists, people that they think should hear about this, um, you know, ways that you can not only, you know, make application, but maybe help spread the word to other people who should absolutely be considering this, please do so, um, you know, before November 29th or contact us and we'll reach out to them. And, uh, and get that process moving with them. So December 18th, we'll notify everyone by email. And then actually the folk arts launch, the folk arts roster will launch on the webpage of the Everhart Museum on January 15th. And that really just kind of gets that infrastructure in place. 
And then we look forward to continuing to build the process of the folk arts communication in this region. Every time that we're talking about this, what we're talking about is building relationships. Across our six county region, we wanna to continue to build a network, um, continue to give other people opportunities to meet one another, build artistic relationships, build collaborations, and really, um, we have an enormous number of incredibly talented people and we're very excited to try to help them have a little bit of an easier time to find one another and for our community to be able to find them as well and that rises helps helps us all rise in our community together and um I think at that point, I'd like to take some questions because as I said, certainly there's enough to talk about, but your questions are really gonna guide us to what it is we need to, to help fill in the blanks for you. Ooh. So um, Kim, I am going to actually ask you a question. We are taking questions live. So we're on a bit of a delay. If you'd like to enter questions into the YouTube chat, that would be great. But um, Kim, I, I know you and I have talked about this a lot. We're thrilled to be a brand new partner of the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts. So this is very new for the Everhart Museum. Um, if you could clarify the region, I know we have a few people that joined a little bit later and Absolutely. the counties that we serve. I know um, Dr. Cullen is going to also, um, we kind of serve the same area, but if you wanna just let them know whoever's joined, um, where they must be living or working. Absolutely. So this is for the, the as I said, a six county region, but we can kind of look at it as the, the endless mountains. We have Susquehanna and Wyoming County. Then in the Valley Cities, we have Lackawanna and Luzerne. And for the Pocono Mountains, Wayne and Pike County. So this is for artists living in that area. And in some cases, if an artist has been working in this area for a very long time, but maybe you live just outside of it, um, we can certainly check with the PCA and see if that would be acceptable too. Because I know there are uh, quite a few people that either used to live here and, and worked here a lot and, and continued those relationships. So really are kind of ensconced in this region already. Thanks, Ken. Mm -hmm. It looks like we don't have any additional questions right now, but okay. we could always come back to them later. So please feel free. I know we're gonna be reposting this on some of our other social media platforms this week and questions can be entered at any time. We'll do our best to get back to you. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce a dear friend and our um, regional partner, Dr. Catherine Richmond Cullen. She is the Director of Arts and Education of Northeastern Pennsylvania at the NEIU, Northeastern Educational Intermediate Unit 19. And she's going to talk a little bit more about arts and education and um, the Pennsylvania, or PPA. Thank you, Steph. And thank you, Kim and Nancy, the technical expert in the background. And I'm here tonight with Liz Feist, who I've known for many years. She was in my third grade class when she was eight years old, and I was a teacher many years ago. Um, Liz and I manage the Pennsylvania Partners in the Arts and the Pennsylvania Arts and Education Partnership. Um, I am happy to tell you that I have been in the role as director for the Arts Council Arts and Education Partnership for 30 years. Um, I was the original partner in the state with Erie Council on the Arts and the um, Galaxy Partnership, which is Central Pennsylvania. So um, I've seen lots of wonderful things happen in Pennsylvania for artists and for arts organizations. But I must say that having the Everhart as the folk arts partner is a brilliant decision on the part of the Arts Council because um, now our region, I mean, we're very connected with the Everhart. We've had partnership programs for all of those 30 years. Um, and I'm thrilled to see Stephanie in the position she's in because um, I, we go back on the, to a time when she was um, 16 years old and a very young artist in one of our um, programs for teens. So you can just imagine how I'm smiling today um, watching her present with Kim um, this wonderful program for folk artists. 
Um, so we just want to do, and we're very grateful to, to tag on to the end here, but this is something the PCA really wants to see is people finding out about all of their partnerships in the region. So we have the same region. Um, Kim, um, this is uh, the first slide from our, um, it, it's from our website. And um, our partnership is called AIENEPA, Arts and Education, Northeast Pennsylvania. And we are housed at the Northeastern Educational Intermediate Unit. So um, it was a great place to, um, to have a partnership that was um, primarily affecting schools. But today, um, our arts and education is a cradle to grave initiative. We work with people of all ages from preschool, um, very young children to older adults. So you can see our, um, our goals are varied, but certainly directed to arts learning throughout life. And we, as I said, have been doing this bit a long time. So, oh, Kim, if you wouldn't mind just changing the slide, thank you. Um, this is the region again, and we're region four, as Kim indicated, um, and we serve the same counties. So we have all of Lackawanna, Luzerne, Wyoming, Susquehanna, Wayne, and Pike County. Um, this is new for us because the state had originally split the counties up a bit, but now all of Pike, all of Wyoming are part of our, um, our region. So it's great that we're serving the same um, group of citizens because we can always trade information like we're doing tonight, share information, and, um, and we're really happy about this. There are 14 partner sites throughout Pennsylvania. And we have monthly meetings um, and sometimes more often with all of the partners and we have uh, so many initiatives. So if you um, become a roster artist and you're listed at our, um, at our website and you're working in our program, you can work anywhere in the state. Um, we're right now partnering with the um, Southeastern Pennsylvania partner, the Philadelphia Arts and Education Partnership for some of our programming. So we're sharing artists and programs. So um, if you move, if you do anything, we know people from all over Pennsylvania. So, you know, it's kind of cool how we're united as the Commonwealth. Kim, may I ask you to change the slide? Thank you. Recently, we were awarded the Pennsylvania Partner in the Arts Partnership as well. This gets very confusing. There are a lot of a lot of letters involved in this. A I E P P A A I E. You know, so it gets confusing so try to hang in there but um our our website which is aienepa.org um again aienepa.org um explains everything and we're also interconnected to the everhart website and they to us so wherever you land you can probably find information about being an artist in in uh, the commonwealth of pennsylvania and opportunities or an arts organization because that's what PPA is. So as Kim said, um, we um, re-grant monies to um, organizations and artists for projects. And uh, once you get involved in the system, you can apply to be a program recipient, which means that you'll receive money every year. Um, so we can explain lots more about that but you certainly can go to our website to find out information but we also avail ourselves to people um, through our website and through our emails so kim thank you um one of the ways artists can work through um the arts and education program is in artist in residency programs and our website explains this we work in schools and in community agencies we've had residencies in hospitals, in health centers, in libraries, um, in the veterans' home, in um, senior community centers, in colleges and universities. So, I mean, the sky's the limit in terms of where we have artists working. And um, we have had many partnership programs with the Everhart Museum over the years, um, offering artists in residence for people of all ages. So, it, the creativity of the partners in the partnership is really something um, I am very proud of because 
um, we have found ways to work together to um, enable artists to thrive in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Kim, thank you. One of our ways of continuing through COVID-19 is to give virtual programming. And so we have two, uh, we actually we have more, but we have a, a very large program called InstaArts. As I said, we're partnering with the Philadelphia Arts and Education Partnership. And we have live classes with professional artists for students in grades three to 12 every day, Tuesday through Saturday. And um, some of the artists are from Philadelphia, some are from the Northeast region, some are from out of our region uh, because some of our artists um, lived here but have moved and they applied back through um, the, um, our AIE partnership. So we actually have artists who work for us who live in New York City, Philadelphia, et cetera. So um, anyway, this program is strictly for kids, but um, kids and teens, but it's delivered virtually. Thank you, Kim. Um, our adult program, which started as a um, in-person program in senior centers and other spaces, um, has become a, an online program. Um, we call it Arts for Life, and it's for older adults. We have three classes a week. All the information is, again, on our website. But we um, have artists working with older citizens two days a week. And then um, one day a week, um, there's a caretaker caregiver program for people who are working with those in their lives who may be afflicted with dementia and or other debilitating diseases. So it's sort of a respite for caregivers working with the artists. Um, so more information on that is available on our website as well. And I believe, yes, we have a picture of um, one of our artists, Earl Lehman, who has been on the Pennsylvania Arts roster for 40 years. He was here actually before I started. And um, he's working, as you can see, in a senior center with um, older adults. Uh, the next slide is our po Poetry Out Loud contest. Um, we work with the Arts Council to provide an opportunity for young people in high school to um, compete in a poetry recitation con contest. This is sponsored by the National Endowment on the Arts through the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts. So if you, we're mentioning this tonight because you never know, maybe a, you have a, a friend who has a child and maybe you do, maybe, you know, I, I don't know who's on this evening or who'll view this. So um, they would go through their public school and or if they're homeschooled, they can come directly to us. So, um, now more information, more of what we do. Thank you. And we also involve teachers in our programs. So if any of you are teachers or friends of teachers or relatives, we have many programs where we give Act 48 professional um, credit for teachers who participate in our programming. And in this particular project, we're working with Broadway Theater to provide um, professional development and then opportunities for teachers to attend um, performances at a reduced rate. Obviously, we're waiting for performances to come back until we can do this again, but we're very hopeful that it'll happen um, sometime in the near future. Um, this is uh, Jennifer Hill. We just, uh, uh, Liz actually created this PowerPoint, did a marvelous job, our part of it anyway. We just, um, we mention our artists and we have ways that people can contact our artists directly and we ask for statements, artistic statements with regard to how they work with um, schools or community organizations. And the next slide is um, a, a slide of many of our, our professional artists who work with us, certainly not all, but um, the website is really wonderful. If you click on one of the artists, you get their bios and information. And they're um, actually categorized by um, their art form. So um, I feel very blessed. I look at these pictures and I think how lucky I am to be working with such marvelous people. And now to, to get to meet folk artists, which is really, we know a few, but we're looking for a lot more. I know that. So I think that might be our last slide, except for contact information. 
um, which involves um, just Liz and I, and there we are. Um, and you can see our um, addresses. But basically, um, if you go to AIE NEPA, you can find us, you can find information. And um, we know that we're going to be having more programming together, the Everhart and, and, um, and us. And so like we have great ideas and we're looking forward to your ideas as to how perhaps you can be on the folk arts roster and also work as an artist in residence. We can pull money to create really great residencies in our region. And we're expecting to do a lot of that, educating people and providing opportunities for artists. So thanks very much, Stephanie and Kim and Nancy. Um, Liz, um, I know Liz asked me, um, to, to do the talking tonight, but I certainly, you know, I, she is my right hand woman. We work completely as a team and um, we um, we're very happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kat. And I, I will say I'm very grateful for our relationship that we've built over a very good amount of time. Um, I do want to clarify and just repeat what Kat said about cross application. So if you are a folk artist and you are applying for this session of our folk art application, there are opportunities for you to also um, work as a teaching artist and possibly also apply for PPA, right Kat? Absolutely, Steph. Thank you for that clarification. So, and then also, um, I think a lot of people are unaware that there's um, occasionally opportunities for artist training. And um, I've been lucky, lucky enough to work with you long enough and to receive some of the amazing training through the PCA. So um, if you want to just maybe touch on that too. Yes, we um, conduct professional development for artists and for teachers. Um, but our artist training, I think, is very special. I mean, we don't, we know that we have the best artists on our roster and that the folk arts roster will be also um, such high quality people. So we're never really trying to show you how to make art or um, ask you to change your art in any way, only embellish it. But we, we give you opportunities to learn to be an educator. And I am a professional educator. I've been teaching for 47 years and I have a doctorate in, um, in education. So I, I do most of the training, but I work with the artists in that training. And a lot of what we do is based on um, how the brain learns. So I'm very interested in um, brain-based studies and how uh, they apply to teaching and learning, especially in the arts. So we offer opportunities for you to get um, schooled, I guess, and to have an exchange with other artists and other professionals um, in terms of how to be an effective teacher. Great. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. I know just meeting other artists too is just so beneficial um, because we are so very spread out that that has probably been one of my favorite parts of working, you know, with you, Kat. And Liz too, of course. Liz is one of my um, good friends as well. Um, so I think we are kind of wrapping up at this point. There are no additional questions, but as I mentioned before, uh, this will be reposted on our social media platforms. You can always check in with us. Email Email addresses are provided on the PowerPoint, but also um, if you'd like to visit www.aienepa.org, that is our um, partner, Kat and Liz at the um, NEIU Arts and Education Partnership of the Northeast Region. And um, our website is www.everheart-museum.org. And you can find more information about the application process. The applications for the Folk Art Partnership are due um, on November 30th. So please try your best to get your questions in in advance so Kim and I can help you through the process. Um, and if there's no more questions, I think we're gonna wrap it up. So thank you so much everyone for joining us this evening and we look forward to hearing from you again. Thanks and have a great night.